Let's take a few minutes to talk about money. 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 Makes the world go round, right? Yeah, it really does. Just take a look at this. Every day, millions and millions of people all over the planet go to work. And why? To make the money they need to buy the things they want. From the homes they live in, the cars they drive, the clothes on their back, and the food on their tables. They need money to buy things for themselves and their families. They work hard for their money, at least most of them do, and although they don't all get paid the same, they all like to earn a reasonable wage. And that's true of teenagers, too. After all, you're an important component of this international system of producers and consumers, and you all need, or want, your stuff. And you buy lots of it. As a matter of fact, teenagers spend a lot more money every year than you'd imagine. And they make that money by doing a variety of jobs. Well, I'm a service associate at Wheel and Sprocket. Well, I started out working at the register, taking down bike information. I also spent some time here in the back, building some bikes, learning about how bikes work, and started at 8.25 an hour. My job is helping people pick out a wardrobe or get ideas of what they might like. Yeah, pretty much that. And I make $10 an hour. <laughs> um, I am a lifeguard at the Mugawa YMCA, and I make $8.25 an hour. I work as a sales associate, um, so some of my basic duties are like keeping the fitting room in check, walking the floor, making sure the customers are doing okay. I also run the register. I make $8.50 an hour. Well, like you and your classmates, these students have a lot of different jobs and they get paid at different rates. What do you think? Should they all be paid the same? Should everyone in your class be paid the same no matter what their job is? Nearly 200 countries around the world have minimum wage laws. The notable exceptions are the Scandinavian countries, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and Finland that have no minimum wage at all. And these are countries ranked among top 10 best countries to live in, according to the United Nations World Happiness Report. And the amount of minimum wages paid are all over the board. In the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the minimum wage is the equivalent of two cents an hour in US money. Poland's minimum wage is equivalent to $2.97. And on the other end of the spectrum, France's minimum wage is the equivalent of $12.22 an hour. And in Australia, it's equal to $16.88 an hour. But we should all make more, right? More, more, more. What would you think if I waved a magic wand and everyone suddenly made $50 an hour? You heard me right. $50 an hour. No choice. An international law. Everyone makes at least $50 an hour. It would be awesome. I would just buy everything that I've wanted and first of all, probably get my own car because that is an issue. <laughs> that would be like, whoa. Uh, I'd be able to put that money towards bigger things. My paycheck would be, I would be a millionaire. I, uh, yeah. Would that be a good idea? Or might there be some unintended consequences? Let me tell you the story of what happened in the United States a long time ago. It starts in the midst of what came to be called the Great Depression. Things were terrible and a lot of people were out of work, including most young people. So the government thought they needed to do something about it. Franklin Roosevelt was president and he decided to shorten hours and raise wages. There was a lot of debate, but in 1938, Congress passed the Fair Labor Standards Act. It set a federally mandated minimum wage of 25 cents an hour. By the way, 25 cents in the US in 1938 would command the same buying power as $4.18 in today's money. Back then, a ticket to the movies would cost 25 cents and 40 cents would buy you a steak dinner. Today, that steak dinner could cost you nine, 12 or $40, depending on the restaurant. Well, that was then, this is now. The federal minimum wage has been going up little by little for years, and along with it, so is the cost of the things you buy. What do you think? To keep up with those cost increases, should there be a minimum wage, and what should it be? Should it keep going up, or is there a downside? Let's ask a couple of experts. Walter Williams and Tom Soule have pretty strong feelings about the minimum wage and its unintended consequences. 
They are especially interested in the minimum wage because a lot of people say a minimum wage is good for minorities and especially minority teens. Minimum wage laws have done more harm to black uh, young people probably than any other single law that's been passed. The, uh, the last time that the black unemployment rate in the United States was lower than the white unemployment rate was 1930, which was the last year before there was a minimum wage law. I mean, the intention is that you will raise the pay of the poor. Wonderful. But if they lose their jobs, then you have lowered the pay of the poor. And so what matters is whether you think beyond the initial stage of what you're doing. The minimum wage law uh, has the effect of discriminating against the employment of low-skilled people. And who are low-skilled workers? Well, for the most part, they're teenagers. And uh, laws in the name of helping kids have destroyed many early work experiences. Now, a number of these labor laws that are on the books, that, that came on the books years ago, protected kids from working in dangerous mines and dangerous factories. Well, those same laws today uh, protect kids from uh, working in air-conditioned plush buildings and plush offices. Early work experiences are important for all young people. It's not the a little bit of money that they earn that's so very important. It's the other things that early work experiences uh, give you. Things like, what well, you come to work on time, you have to respect your supervisor, you have to uh, maintain a certain demeanor. These are the kind of things that you learn from early work experiences that make you a more effective worker uh, in the future. It brings a, a little bit of, uh, of, of pride and self-respect from being at least a fin being financially a semi uh, independent. When your parents were your age, there were a lot of minimum wage jobs. For example, my first job was in a dry cleaners. I got three thirty-five an hour, and I was very happy to get it. <laughs> uh, Subway, probably minimum wage around seven dollars. When I was 16, I rented roller skates. I made $2.90 an hour. Now let's go back and ask those same people what they're doing today. I am assistant regional property manager of 16 buildings in the area. My salary right now is around $20 an hour. My salary as a computer programmer is like around $100,000 per year. Now I manage internal communications for North and South America of the largest steel company in the world. Don't be surprised if it's hard to find many successful adults still working for a minimum wage. This seems to be evidence that early work experience pays off. You see, these people have moved up by developing a variety of skills. And if you want to move up, you'll do that too. People won't just offer you more money for a living wage unless you've developed some skills that they want. And you display some positive attitudes like working harder than your co-workers, doing work that others don't want to do, and showing up early and staying late. But let's be fair. There are currently about four and a half million people in the U.S. who work for the minimum wage for a number of reasons. Many are unskilled, and some are undocumented or extra-legal foreign workers. You might say they're black market workers. Here's a hypothetical situation. What if, for some reason, there were high taxes imposed on blue jeans? Prices go sky high. Suddenly, there's great pressure to smuggle in black market blue jeans. The same could be said of black market labor. It would seem to follow that the higher the minimum wage, the less likely I might be to hire an inexperienced worker, and more likely to take a risk on black market labor. In Europe, it's classic, because they have, they have not only minimum, higher minimum wages, they have uh, all kinds of mandated benefits that the employer has to pay, all of which adds to the cost of hiring a worker, and all of which increases the unemployment rate. Young people in their 20s have unemployment rates of 20% and up, and they, and they are unemployed longer. Okay, so let's talk to some employers. Where would they get the money to pay their workers if we increase the minimum wage to $50 an hour? Uh, $50 an hour, I have to close my door. I'd probably have to go out of business. I'd have to lay off most of my staff. If I have to raise my prices, I I'm going to have to shut my doors. If I had to continue paying my assistant at that rate, I might as well hang it up. So how much would you pay for that burger? If the owner were faced with that big increase in the minimum wage, he's going to be passing on those increased costs to his customers, and at the prices he'll have to charge, <laughs> you'll probably eat a lot fewer burgers. So you're not about to pay $25 for a burger? Well, maybe the owner shouldn't be required to increase his help's pay to that minimum wage of $50 an hour. 
Meet Kelly and Max. They're both 16. Last week they had interviews for minimum wage jobs at the local supermarket. They're looking forward to their first paycheck and being able to buy things they need and want. Hi, we have an appointment to see Mr. Layton? Yeah, he should be in his office. Just... Okay, thanks. I cannot wait for that first paycheck. <laughs> Yes? Mr. Layton, we interviewed for the cashier jobs. Max, Kelly, come on in. Take a seat. Take a seat. Ladies, you both seem like you'd be good workers and fit in well here at D&D Foods. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. We'd be super hardworking. I was all set to hire both of you. But as you know, the minimum wage has just increased to $50 an hour. So I'm afraid I can only offer one of you a job. And even that's a stretch. I'm under so much pressure to meet budget and payroll that I'm also thinking of ways to automate the stock room, which means hiring fewer workers at that incredible 50 bucks an hour. I'm really, really sorry. It's okay. And that's not the half of it. Max and Kelly were planning on buying new phones until they saw the prices. We can't afford that. Well. The phone manufacturer has lots of minimum wage workers, and they all just got an incredible raise to $50 an hour. What could he do except to pass on his new cost to the consumer? Wow. So what do you think? Is this increased minimum wage mandated by government a good idea? Or might it cause shortages and therefore higher prices? But if you get a higher paycheck because you've done a better job, that's an opportunity. So, should employers hire their workers at whatever the worker is willing to work for? And by the way, that $50 an hour, I just made that up for fun. You may think there's no connection between my mythical $50 an hour and those little bumps we get from time to time and the mandated minimum wage, but isn't the principle the same? Think about it. Breaking news, this just in. In the spring of 2014, voters in Switzerland rejected a mandated minimum wage of $25 an hour. The opposition argued that such a minimum wage would destroy jobs, hurt lower skilled workers, make it harder for young people to enter the workforce, and raise prices. The no vote means that Switzerland will remain one of the world's countries with no minimum wage. 